In this video, we're going to practice the unit circle. We're going to find trig values in radians and degrees. We're going to do sine, cosine, tangent, cosecant, secant, cotangent. We're going to go through 26 examples, A through Z, and I want to encourage you to pause the video, practice these problems. If you can get all of these right, you master the unit circle. And we're going to be uh, looking at our unit circle over here a little bit, but I encourage you to try to do it by memory if you can. So let's dive in and let's see what we can learn here. So starting off with letter A, sine of 210 degrees. Well, how do we figure out what the sine of 210 degrees is? Well, first of all, we want to think about where is that on our unit circle? We start over here at the positive x-axis, 90, 180, 30 more is going to put us right here, roughly. Okay, and wherever you end up, you drop a perpendicular to the x-axis, and your reference angle is this angle here between the terminal ray and the x-axis. You can see that that's a 30-degree angle. So what we do is we refer back to the 30-degree angle in our first quadrant, okay, and the coordinates of this point are going to be the same as the coordinates of the 30-degree uh, point in the first quadrant. The only thing is in the third quadrant, because you're going left and down, both the x and the y are negative. So that's going to be negative square root 3 over 2, negative 1 half for this point. Now remember, the sine is the y-coordinate, because remember, sine is uh, opposite over hypotenuse. Since the hypotenuse is 1, anything divided by 1 is itself. So on the unit circle, sine is the y, cosine is the x, tangent is the y over the x. So in this case, you can see the sine, our y-coordinate, is going to be negative 1 half, and you got it. Now, if any of this seems uh, challenging for you, check out my Master the Unit Circle video that I did, and I go into more depth. But here we're trying to get some good practice in. So let's go to letter B now, cosine of 11 pi over 6. You can see we're switching um, uh, gears here from degrees to radians. So where is 11 pi over 6 on our unit circle? Sometimes what I like to do is think about this as a mixed number. It's 1 and 5 sixths pi, right? So 1 pi we know is like 180 plus another 5 sixths of pi is going to put us right here. And if I drop a perpendicular to the x-axis, I can see that reference angle is going to be 1 sixth pi. 1 sixth pi is the same as 30 degrees again. So you can see at this point it's going to have the same coordinates. It's going to be square root 3 over 2, but negative 1 half. See how we're going down? The y-coordinate is negative. Now we're interested in looking for the cosine value. Cosine is our x-coordinate right on the unit circle. So this is going to be square root 3 over 2. Okay, let's look at the next one. Tangent of 5 pi over 3. So I, now a lot of this, what I do in my mind, but we're kind of drawing it out here just to kind of visualize. But I say to myself, where is 5 pi over 3? That's like 1 and 2 thirds pi. So 1 pi is 180 plus another 2 thirds of pi. 3 thirds would be all the way over to here, right? So 2 thirds is going to put us right here. Wherever I end up, I drop a perpendicular to the x-axis, and I look at that reference angle between the terminal ray and the x-axis, and I can see that that's going to be one-third pi, because this was two-thirds plus another one-third to get back to the x-axis. So one-third pi, I'm thinking 60 degrees, and it's going to have these values here at this point, one-half, comma, negative square root 3 over 2. Why negative? Because we're going down. It's like you're going right a half down square root 3 over 2. Another little uh, hint is that when I think about this shorter leg, I know it's the one-half leg, that's 0.5. The longer leg I know is the square root 3 over 2 leg, that's about 0 0.86, 0 0.87 roughly. So we're interested in the tangent. The tangent's the y-coordinate divided by the x-coordinate. Well, negative root 3 over 2 divided by one-half, the 2's are going to cancel. That's just going to give you negative square root of 3. Okay, let's go to letter D now, the cosecant of 3 pi over 4, another radian one. So this is like 3 fourths of pi. So we're going not pi, 180, but 3 fourths of the way. That's going to put us somewhere right about here. If we drop a perpendicular to the x-axis, this is going to have a reference angle of 1 fourth pi, or you could say pi over 4, which is a 45 degree angle. So we know the coordinates of this point here are going to be the same as the one in the first quadrant, root 2 over 2, root 2 over 2, but the x-coordinate is going to be negative because we're going left, and the y-coordinate is going to be positive because we're going up. We want the cosecant. Now, sine and cosecant, they're reciprocals of each other. So the sine we know is the y-coordinate. The cosecant is the reciprocal of the y. So this is going to be 2 over square root of 2. Now, we don't want to leave that radical in the denominator. 
So we're going to rationalize it by multiplying the top and bottom by root 2. And so that's going to give us 2 root 2 over 2. The 2's cancel. It's just going to be square root of 2. Okay, let's look at the next one. Secant of 120 degrees. So we're back to degrees now. So where is 120? We start here at the positive x-axis. We rotate 90 plus 30 more. It's going to put us right here at 120. We drop a perpendicular to the x-axis. And remember that reference angle is between the terminal ray and the x-axis. And you can see 120, that's going to be another 60 degrees to get back to the x-axis, which means that this point is going to have the same coordinates as a 60 degree angle in the first quadrant. It's just that the x is going to be negative since we're going left, and the y is going to be positive since we're going up. Now, what are we interested in? We're interested in the secant. Remember, the cosine and the secant are reciprocals of each other. On the unit circle, the cosine is the x-coordinate. So we're going to take the reciprocal of that x-coordinate, and that's going to give us negative 2. Okay, now for letter F, now we've got the cotangent of 90 degrees. Okay, 90 degrees is going to put us right here. And the cotangent is a reciprocal of the tangent. We know tangent's y over x, so cotangent's going to be x over y. 0 divided by 1 is going to be equal to 0. And for letter G, the sine of pi. Okay, pi we know is 180 degrees. Pi is going to be right here. And at this point, what are the coordinates? Well, we're going left 1, up 0. This is the point negative 1, 0. And the sine we know is the y-coordinate. So at this point, it's going to be equal to 0. Let me erase the whiteboard. Let's continue on. We're going to go through A through Z, 26 examples. Again, see if you can pause the video and try some of these on your own. Okay, for letter H now, we've got the cosine of 225 degrees. So where's 225? Well, we're going 180 plus another 45. That's going to put us right about here. Drop a perpendicular to the x-axis, and we can see that that's a 45-degree reference angle which means we refer back to the 45 degree angle in the first quadrant. It's going to have the same coordinates, the root 2 over 2, root 2 over 2, but they're both going to be negative because we're in the third quadrant. We're going left and down. We want the cosine, which we know is the x coordinate on the unit circle. So this is just going to be negative square root of 2 over 2. Okay, for letter i, what did you get for this one? Tangent of 4 pi over 3. 4 pi over 3, I think of this as 4 thirds pi, or 1 and 1 third pi. So you're going 1 pi plus another 1 third, which is going to put us right about here. Drop a perpendicular to the x-axis, and you can see that that reference angle is going to be 1 third pi, or pi over 3. So we refer back to that first quadrant, 60-degree uh, uh, angle, pi over 3. This is going to be uh, 1 half. Uh, negative one half because we're in the third quadrant negative square root three over two because we're going left negative down negative And we're interested in the tangent which the tangent is the y over the x When you divide these the twos are going to cancel and the negatives are going to cancel. This is just going to give us a positive square root of three Okay for letter J now the cosecant of seven pi over four I think of this as one and three-fourths pi so we're going one pi plus another 3 fourths of pi, which is going to put us somewhere right about here. You drop a perpendicular to the x-axis, and you look at that reference angle, which we went 3 fourths of pi. It would take another 1 fourth of pi to get back to the x-axis. So if we refer back to the 1 fourth pi, or 45 degree angle here, this is going to be uh, root 2 over 2, comma, negative root 2 over 2, Okay, because we're in the fourth quadrant, y is negative. We want the cosecant, which is the reciprocal of the sine. Sine is the y-coordinate. If we flip that over, we're going to get negative 2 over square root of 2, which we can rationalize. And that's going to give us negative 2 root 2 over 2 divided by 2. The 2's are going to cancel, which is just going to give us negative uh, square root of 2. Okay, now for letter K, the secant of 270 degrees. So back to degrees here. 270, I'm sure you're familiar with that one. That's going to put us right here, and the coordinates are 0, negative 1. Now, the secant is the reciprocal of the cosine, right? Cosine is our x-coordinate, and what you can do when you take the reciprocal of an a integer like this, you can think of it as a fraction by putting it over 1. Anything divided by 1 is itself. So the reciprocal of 0 would be like 1 over 0, which is undefined. So that means that uh, you can draw it like that, or you can write undefined. Okay, how about for letter L, cotangent of 135. So 135 
is 90 plus another 45. That's going to put us right here. We drop a perpendicular. We can see that reference angle is a 45 degree angle. We've already gotten that written down here from a previous problem. We can see negative root 2 over 2, root 2 over 2. We want the cotangent, which is the x over the y. Now, anything divided by itself is 1. See, these are both root 2 over 2, but a negative divided by a positive is going to give us a negative 1. Okay, for letter M, we've got the sine of pi over 4. Pi over 4 is one that you, I'm sure you've memorized. It's right here in the first quadrant. Um, and you can see that's a 45 degree. Sine is the y coordinate, so you can see it's going to be just root 2 over 2. That was kind of an easy one for us. And for letter n, the cosine of pi over 6. Pi over 6 is 30. Remember, you can always put 180 in for pi, so 180 divided by 6 is 30. We want the cosine, which is the x coordinate, so that's going to be square root 3 over 2. Okay, for letter o, the tangent of pi over 3, this is a 60 degree angle, which is right here. Uh, we want tangent, so that's y over x. The 2's are going to cancel in the denominator. That's going to be square root 3 over 1, which is square root of 3. And for letter P, we have the cosecant of 330 degrees, which 330 is where? It's almost to 360, but it's 30 degrees short of that or shy of that. So this is a 30 degree reference angle. And so these are our coordinates. And we want the cosecant, which is the reciprocal of the sine, which is the y-coordinate. So if we take the reciprocal of negative one-half, we're going to get negative two. And for letter Q, the secant of 150. 150, that's not on our circle here yet. That's 90 plus 60 more. That's going to put us right here. We drop a perpendicular to the x-axis. That's a 30-degree reference angle. Okay, to get to the x-axis, we can refer back to the 30-degree angle in our first quadrant which is going to be a negative square root 3 over 2, positive 1 half. The uh, reason the x is negative is we're going left. Y is positive, we're going up. We're interested in the secant, which is the reciprocal of the x-coordinate, because cosine is the x, and secant and cosine are uh, reciprocals. So if we flip that over, that's going to give us a negative 2 divided by square root of 3. We're going to want to rationalize that by multiplying the top and bottom by square root of 3. So that comes out to negative 2. 2 square root of 3 divided by 3. Let me erase the whiteboard. We'll do the last uh, few examples and we'll get some practice there. See if you can take a screenshot of this uh, right here, these last examples, and try them on your own. We'll go through them together. So starting with letter R, the cotangent of 2 pi over 3. So 2 pi over 3 is like 2 thirds of pi. Pi is 180, so we're going 2 thirds. Another 1 third would take us back to the x-axis. So that reference angle is 1 third pi. And you can see that's going to be this point right here that we did on our previous problem. It's negative one-half square root 3 over 2. We want the cotangent, which is the x over the y. So x over y, that's going to be a negative one-half divided by square root 3 over 2. Now, we know when we divide, that's the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal. So you can see the 2's are canceling, and then if we rationalize this, by multiplying the numerator and denominator by square root of 3 over square root of 3, that's going to give us a negative root 3 over 3. Okay, for letter S, we've got the sine of 5 pi over 4. That's like 1 and 1 fourth pi. So we're going pi plus another 1 fourth of pi is going to put us right here at the root 2 over 2 uh, coordinate. And we want the sine, which is the y value, so that's going to be negative root 2 over 2. Okay, for letter T now, the cosine of 3 pi over 2. This is like 1 and a half pi. So we're going 1 pi plus another half of pi. That's going to put us right here at this point. We want the cosine, which is the x-coordinate. That's going to be 0. And for U, we've got the tangent of 7 pi over 6. That's like 1 and 1 sixth pi. So 1 pi plus another 1 sixth of pi. 1 sixth is like 30 degrees. That's going to put us right at this point here. We want the tangent, which is the y over x. And you can see that was the same problem that we had over here, negative 1 half divided by root 3 over 2, but they were both negative. So this is just going to come out to a positive root 3 over 3. And for letter V, the cosecant of 8 pi over 3, this is like 2 and 2 thirds pi. So 2 pi is all the way around, plus another 2 thirds is going to put us right here. The reference angle is 1 third pi, or 60 degrees. So you can see we've got the coordinate negative one-half root three over two. We want the cosecant, which is the reciprocal of the y. So that's two over square root of three. 
we can rationalize by multiplying the top and bottom by root 3. So that comes out to 2 square root of 3 over 3. And for letter W, we have the secant of pi over 2. Remember, pi is 180. Divided by 2 is 90. That's going to put us right here. The secant is the reciprocal of the cosine, which cosine is the x-coordinate. If we take the reciprocal of that x-coordinate, that's 1 over 0, which is undefined because we uh, can't divide by 0. Letter x, we've got the cotangent of 225. 225 is going to be 180 plus 45 more. That's going to put us right here. That's this coordinate, the root 2 over 2 one. Cotangent is x over y, but anything divided by itself is going to be equal to 1. And for y, we've got the sine of 7 pi over 4, which is 1 and 3 fourths pi. So 1 pi plus another 3 fourths of pi. That puts us over here at these root 2 over 2 point. And sine is the y coordinate, so that's going to be negative root 2 over 2 in the fourth quadrant. Y is negative. And then for letter z, cosine of 4 pi over 3, that's like 1 and 1 third pi. So we're going 1 pi plus another 1 third of pi. That reference angle is 1 third pi or 60. We can refer back to our 60 in the first quadrant. Same coordinates, but x and y are negative, being in the third quadrant. We want the cosine, which is the x coordinate, and that's going to come out to negative one half. So great job A through Z. If you're able to get these problems, let me know in the comments below how you did. And if you want more practice or you want a better understanding of how this unit circle works, follow me over to that master the unit circle video that I did right there. We'll go over there, we'll get some more practice, and I'll see you over there.